I had no premonition, nothing like that. John was away, but I mean, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't expecting anything bad at all. As soon as I saw the policeman at the door, I thought, oh no, it's John. It's been an accident, he's had a heart attack. They're very nice, the police. They came in. I don't remember exactly what they said. It's all a bit of a blur. You, Daniel Pritchard's mother. Something like that. As soon as they said his name, a roaring sound went off in the back of my head, and I knew. I think I said, where's Joe? I suddenly felt very protective over Joe. I said, he's fine, Joe's fine. If you go to mean Danny wasn't. I mean, when they did say it, I don't remember hearing it. I kept trying to offer them a cup of tea because I was trying to stave off the moment that they were going to tell me that Dan was dead. Because if they didn't say it, it hadn't happened. And I realised this is ridiculous. And I wanted to see Joe very badly. But they said he was still at the hospital because the shock had tumbled him over. They kept telling me to sit down. I didn't want to sit down. Sitting down somehow meant taking it in. I didn't want to take it in. I wanted to hop back. It was the moment before they'd arrived when everything was fine and I was innocent and Danny was still alive. I just don't want to do that. It wouldn't be a hop now. It'd be more of a long crawl. Back through all those days and weeks and months. One day he'll have been dead for longer than he lived. He lived for 6,693 days. I was with him for almost every one of them. Stranger things you think about when you can't sleep. How many days, weeks, months did he live for? It's like sheep counting for the bereaved. Doesn't work though. You still can't sleep. <laughs>